Hey beauties, welcome back to Real Girl Talk Podcast Radio. I am your host, Sherry Ricard. I'm a medical professional, business leader, author, speaker, and adversity recovery expert, bringing you fascinating guests, business, beauty, and lifestyle tips to help you create a beautiful life and always committed to keeping it real. Now let's dive in. Welcome back to the podcast. My guest is a former trial lawyer and C-suite executive. Judy Weber believes nothing is impossible. She is a sought after keynote speaker on entrepreneurship, women in business, confidence, and business leadership, and the host of She Is Extraordinary podcast, which is straight talk wrapped up in love and grace about what it takes to make it in business and the founder of She Is Extraordinary Movement, which seeks to change the way women see themselves. Hello, Judy. How are you? Hello, Sherry. I am fabulous. How are you? Doing so good. So before we started recording, we were chit-chatting about how to really kind of share our podcast with everyone. And so I'm just going to start off like that. Judy is going to fill you up. I'm just telling you right now, she filled me up the other day. We were both guest on a virtual conference and I just stopped dead in my tracks and listened to her because she truly filled me up and I knew immediately I had to share her with my listening audience because I know women you're going to get a lot out of this. So I'm just going to preface this whole episode right off the bat and say, listen, if you are filled with this episode and you're blessed with it and or you know someone else that you can be a blessing to, share this episode with a friend. Just share this episode with a friend and be a blessing to someone else because I know Judy's going to be a blessing to you. So that being said, you are a professional women's business coach. But what I love about you is you talk about faith in building your business. And a lot of coaches that I have on my show we kind of miss and we we go over the the faith aspect in building our business and empowering each other and filling each other up. So I want you to talk just a little about a little bit about what you do and where your passion lies. Wow, I love that. Thank you for that. I'm different. First of all, I want to say this. I'm a different coach than so many other business coaches out there for like no less than a thousand reasons. Number one is that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life and the Lord of my business. Hallelujah. And so when I decided to pivot in the summer of 2019 from working with my sister, we had broken up with our business. We're still sisters and still happy. But I went to God that entire summer of 2019. I said, Lord, now what do I do? You know, Mm -hmm. and I felt very strongly that he's like, I am a part of your life. You need to make me a part of your business. And you need to focus on other women of faith to build their business. Because look, you know, there's so many coaches out there talking about the secret and crystals and all this, what I consider nonsense. Because, but you know what's funny? These, these other theories, these other schools of thought, they have as its foundation, biblical principles, but they're not attributing it to God Almighty or to the Lord Jesus Christ. They're right. attributing it to who the heck knows what. So anyway, everything I do is based on the strong foundation of Jesus Christ. What better strategist? Mm. What better marketer? You know, every program I've ever done, every challenge I've ever done inside my Facebook group, it comes from him. I sit with him and I say, Lord, okay, what would you like me to do? So that's one thing about what makes me different. Another one is I'm 55. I'm no spring chicken. I've done lots of stuff in my life. You know, I um, I come from poor stock, and I say that with such humility and pride. My daddy was a factory worker. Mom stayed home. I didn't think people like me could be a lawyer until I got out in the world, and I thought, well, I'm just as smart as them. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. So I, you know, graduated from college with a music ed degree. Couldn't get a teaching job here on the East Coast. Didn't want to go out west. So I pivoted. Worked at Macy's of all things, worked my way up to management, then went to outside sales, then ended up wow. being a secretary. I knew I was going to law school. So I've done a lot of things. But what makes me different, and then I'll pause for a breath, is you know, in law school, they teach you how to think like a lawyer. And so with me and my client, I teach them how to think like a thriving CEO. Mm, I love that. Think like a thriving CEO. Teach us. Now, we don't all have CEOs on here, right? I mean, 
Well, I, I mean, I do have CEOs listeners, but that's not my entire audience. But yet that CEO is basically just being the leader to whatever whatever organization you're over. So if you want to be a leader in your field, then you are the, I mean, we all are CEOs of our household. <laughs> I'm the oh, CEO of mine. <laughs> my husband might argue, but I am the CEO of my household. So talk to us a little bit about how you how you do this. How do you coach? Give us those tips. Fill us up with how you coach from this viewpoint. Beautiful. Well, you, you took the words out of my mouth when you said, wait a minute, who's a thriving CEO? You know, that mom out there that is a stay at home. I left the practice of law when I had three kids and my parents who were watching my kids when I was pregnant with the third, I just have to say this is such a funny story. I said, mommy, I'm pregnant. And she goes, well, you know, me and dad aren't going to watch now when baby three comes. I mean, I really thought she was kidding. I'm like, what are you talking about? So anyway, I stayed home. So yeah, I think that the, I know that being a stay at home mom with the little ones, that's the most important job in the world. And right. you know that as a mom. Yeah. I, it's important that we as women not play small. Mm. And that we take that leadership role. You know, my whole concept behind my She Is Extraordinary podcast is that we need to fully embrace who we are in Christ. Mm. Because when we do, when we go all in on who God made us to be, then we realize we are powerful. The Bible tells us this. We are bold. We are courageous. Even when we're scared, we do scary things. Mm -hmm. We're decisive. We're not, you know, mamsy, pamsy, and unsure of ourselves. We contemplate. We, you know, do our due diligence and then we decide and then we go forward. So it's really important, no matter what you're doing in life right now, as you're leading, whoever it is you're leading, whether it's your business, your family or whatever, that you take that person, that extraordinary you that the Lord God made, fully embrace it. And only then can you really walk into your purpose. That is so true. So let's talk about someone that maybe they do go to church, maybe they don't go to church. And I'm not saying you have to go to church to be filled and be saved because believe me, I miss church often. And my daughter gets on to me constantly. My church sometimes may be a cup of coffee with my husband sitting in his spot, me in my spot, and we're watching Joel Olstein on TV, or we're watching a live uh, through our church on, you know, together, or we may be listening to a podcast sermon or a Facebook live. I mean, we, we're filled and I'm not just saying I do that on Sundays because I will tell you, Judy, my routine every single day is to get up and I feel myself spiritually every single morning. Um, I sit in my chair with my coffee. My husband calls it my prayer chair. Some people have prayer closets. I have a prayer chair and I feel myself spiritually. I think we have to fill ourselves emotionally Physically, I believe that we have to have connections between relationships. I think COVID has just about killed us because of the touch factor is gone, right? We're used to hugging, especially me living in South Louisiana. I mean, we all hug, we hug strangers. I mean, we just hug people constantly. Um, and so that's been really hard for people to reach out an elbow. Uh, at first I thought, what are you doing? That's so disrespectful and weird because here, it would be considered disrespectful and weird, but you know, we were going through the COVID time. How do we connect if we feel that we're not fully or help us get connected? Maybe we're really strong in our business, but we're lacking that faith aspect and we don't know how to connect it in our business without scaring off a few people. Well, I could go in a thousand different directions. Let me, let me go here. I believe that faith is, needs to be the core of every business. Mm. So some people have faith in themselves and there's a part of that that's true. But for me, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I will fall. I know I make mistakes every day, mm. but I know Jesus doesn't. So I have my faith in him and who he made me to be. And that's where I get my confidence. And that's where I can be bold and reach out to people that I don't know, influencers and invite them to my podcast. And that's how I'm able to reach out. And by God's grace, I connect was connected with you through a client of mine in that event. I mean, so faith needs to be the foundation of every business. If you are not committed and mm -hmm. fully believe in what you're doing, then you will be among the, what is it, 80 to 90% of businesses that are going to fail in the mm -hmm. first two years. And, and one of my passion points is 
women, we play too small. Like, like we're always just like, you know, how about this? How about if somebody would say, wow, I really like your haircut or wow, I love that dress. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I'll confess right away. I'll be like, oh, it's no big deal. Or, and you know, like, oh, I got this on sale. Or if they, if they applaud you for something you've done, isn't it funny how we almost instinctively downplay it? Like, right. oh, you know. It's just whatever you downplay it. Right. It's but, almost like you're you're afraid. Oh, don't value me that much because I don't want to feel valued right now. It's not about me. You know, I totally understand that. Yeah. And it's really strange because when I hosted my first live, a big live event with my sister in April of 2018, mm -hmm. that 500 women in the room. And on the breaks, women would come up to me left and right and they're saying, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing conference I've ever been to. You're amazing. Your sister's amazing. Blah, blah. After a while, I just felt like I was like, stop stop somehow right. it just didn't feel right but then there was a part of me saying well you worked darn hard you should take that compliment but again this all goes to it i think the way god made us women there's that beautiful humility which is great but we need to be more confident and know that this and those gifts he gave us is to serve others so we need to fully embrace that say you're with a company their values or the company's values. And I know that people are talking about this right now because we have this all inclusive, you know, include everyone. And I totally believe in inclusion. However, there are people that have certain values that align with the Bible and what Jesus says, and they stick to them. And there's no, there's not a gray area. It's black or white. So if you're in a business, um, not necessarily your business, but maybe you're in leadership and you're with a company that has decided that they're going to create all of these new values and these, uh, you find yourself having to watch videos of competency and, you know, all of these things. And you're like, wait a minute, I don't agree with this. That's messing with my faith. What should you do? I mean, how do you react to that? as a faith-filled person and you have Jesus in your life and he is your savior, but here you are in this big leadership role with a company that has decided that they're going to add certain aspects to their company and call them values, but they don't align with your values. Again, I am rarely at a loss for words here and examples at this age. So I will go back to me as a lawyer I'm a, I'm a trial lawyer, mm -hmm. and I remember over the years, a partner would say, you need to do this, whatever this was, or that, you need to make this argument, or whatever, and I'd be like, I'm sorry, I can't. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You know, or if they wanted me to, I don't want to say lie, but, you know, stretch the truth, or do something sure. that, and I'm like, I can't, I can't, okay, so if you want to fire me, you can feel free, but I am not doing that. Now, I don't mean to be flippant when I say that, Sherry, because I know there's some people um, myself included at some at one point in time, I could not just lose my job. Right. But there come, it depends, I guess, it depends on the circumstance and exactly what's going on. But for example, I, I love everybody, right? And I am not judgmental to the point of saying, I wouldn't want to talk to you or I wouldn't want to hang out with you. That is not me. And when Christians do that, it really makes my heart hurt because that is not what Jesus is about. But for someone to say, Judy, you would have to, um, you know, back our commitment to uh, to abortion, a woman's right to choose or something like that. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I can't. Okay, mm. that is that is murder. I cannot. So you can have that employer, but don't expect me to like your blog post about that. Don't expect me to rally around that. I can't. Mm. Yeah, I guess you can be there, but not necessarily be involved or you know, and I'll, I'll tell you, that makes me think about a um, post that I made. Now, this was on my personal Facebook page, okay? Mm -hmm. And I posted, and it's been, I don't know, January, I, I guess, last month. I had posted, because I was so over all of this argument on social media, like I just completely over it. And I felt, and I still feel this way, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the professional in this situation with business and faith and leadership. I feel that my personal page is my personal opinion. Now, it's different if I'm putting it on my business page, you know, if it's on Empowerment is Beauty is my Facebook page, or if it's on Real Girl Talk Podcast, my Instagram, and it's a little bit different. On my personal Facebook page, I was tired of these old high school people 
chiming in and arguing with other friends on my own page. I was like, this, I was like, get off. <laughs> but I was I'm very adamant about a couple of things. I am very much for our First Amendment right, and I am very much for our Second Amendment right, basically all the amendments, but I will go toe to toe with you on my freedom of speech and my ability to protect my family. If somebody comes in my house and wants to rob us and rape me, I am going to shoot you, okay? So I'm just telling you that's where I stand. I can lose listeners right now because they think that we all should banish guns in life. I don't care because that is my viewpoint and this is my show and I feel like I can say it, okay? Another thing, I put this on my Facebook, my personal Facebook. I said that if you believe that it's okay to silence a sitting president, not I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Trump, Biden, Harris. I don't even know who our president is anymore. But if I don't care who it is, okay? If you think it's okay to silence a president, that means it's okay to silence me because I'm just an American citizen. That's the president of our United States of America, right? If you think it's okay to silence them and you think it's okay to take away all of our freedom of speech, you need to unfriend me on my Facebook page. We have nothing to share, no love loss. We have nothing to share because I stand so firmly with it, Judy. And mm -hmm. I had people that, that disagreed with me on my own page, and that's cool. I mean, you know, I think I lost, I don't know, I had like, you don't even know half the people on your own personal Facebook, right? I think I had 900 and something, and I lost a total of like eight people or something like that. In the scheme of things, you know, what 1%, that's fine. Um, and But there were people that would come on there and they would announce that they're no longer going to be friends with me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that was just a freedom of speech. Okay, so <laughs> you just used your freedom of speech to tell me that you weren't, you were going to unfriend me because of my comment about freedom of speech. Okay, got it. <laughs> so that being said, when you're in business, it is super hard. It's super hard to be able to have your own opinion have strong opinions personally and have those values and at the same time you're like oh you know we can't do that because i could lose customers or you know i'm in leadership and i can't do that because i work for this company and i i get that with the from a lawyer standpoint and saying no you know i can't support that but for somebody that works for a huge organization or maybe they just have a small business and they have those values, they have certain values that what they decide to do is just be silent. When we know that we should be speaking out in God's word is being silent is, are we still being supportive of our faith? Yeah, I think that's a tough one. And again, I think it depends on so many circumstances. I have a hard time being quiet. I'm a big mouth. I'm an extrovert. And so, <laughs> and you know, this may not be a surprising thing that I pretty much have a strong opinion on everything. Um, yeah, me so, too. You know, it's hard for me to be quiet and I think yeah. my sister's in. So as far as if you, if you're working for an employer who has ideals that are not yours and are not aligned with Christianity, I don't know that it's bad for you to remain quiet and let the company say what it is. Right. Um, and you're not the one saying it. And right. when you stand firm in what you believe, like, I, I don't think that's a problem. I do think that for me, and again, I don't stand in judgment. Only only Christ does. I'm not going to stand in judgment. So if you have a small business and you really feel that if you put out there that you are pro Second Amendment, I don't know how anybody couldn't be pro First Amendment. I don't really care if someone is saying something I totally disagree with. Right. This country was built on the ability for you, me, and everybody to speak their mind right. without violence right. and without you know, restriction or censorship for heaven's sake. So, right. you know, uh, but I, I think as a small business owner, for me personally, like, you know, you heard me from the beginning. Crystals is garbage. Tarot cards is garbage. Um, the secret is garbage, you know, I, and, and I'm sorry if that offends someone, but I right. think on the idea that in small business, larger businesses too, but especially small businesses, you are your brand. Mm. And I think in the idea of women need to be bold, and courageous and step into their purpose who god made them to be like mm -hmm. you are your brand so i'm totally out there everybody like, sees me anywhere facebook instagram at judy weber live wherever you find me mm -hmm. like not to 
going to stay silent, right? right. Um, and, so, and so to me, we shouldn't be afraid of being polarizing because that is what will attract the ideal clients you want to you, like-minded people. If you say something that is going to be polarizing, yay, that's marketing 101. That's a very, very good thing. I may have polarized some people on my personal Facebook page. <laughs> But, you know, with my page, I don't talk a lot about my podcast. I don't talk. That page is more of like, look at my granddaughter. Is she not the most wonderful thing in the world? You know, and you post, you know, you post events. My dad passed away or my son that had passed away's birthday or anniversary is death. You know, there's a lot of people on there that shared those moments with me. And so I will post things or I will say things. Um, that's not re really where I post a lot in business, but I was just felt very strong that day. And I had several people said, Sherry, take that down. You don't need to do that. And I was like, Ted Gummit, that is my personal page. It's not a business page. And that's how I feel. And I don't know, that was it. So we kind of got off on a tangent there because I really want to talk to you about what you do in coaching women. So let's talk about that because I know that you're very impactful in what you do. You, you're, you basically coach women that are high achievers, right? High achieving women and incorporate faith in their business. So let's talk about that. And then I want to talk a little bit about your podcast show too, and the kind of guests you have on and what you share. I want you to share that with everybody here, but let's talk about your coaching aspect and give us some little tips and tricks and secrets that some people have to pay for. We're going to get it for free right now, Judy. <laughs> Almost every woman that I meet before they work with me, I say, um, who do you want to work with? And they say, anybody, everybody. I don't want to turn anybody away. Well, sure, we don't want to. That's your choice. You can work with whatever. But you see, we need to take the reins. We need to say, this is my business, and I'm going to set parameters and boundaries. I don't want clients calling me at 10 o'clock at night. Um, you know, I have a lot of realtors uh, as clients and they say, well, Judy, I have to answer that text at 10 o'clock. And I said, well, I was a realtor. And let me tell you, you don't. Because if you do that, you've given them permission. But instead you say, here's how I operate. Now, if you're negotiating a contract, that's a whole different thing. Sure. But if they're just, you know, not being able to sleep and they call you at like two in the morning, that's kind of a problem. Right. So this idea of unapologetically setting the parameters of your business. When do you want to work? Do you want to be done at four so that you can have dinner and evening time with the kids and grandkids or do whatever with friends? Sure, why not? You can do it. Uh, that leads to tip number two, time blocking. Mm. There's only so many hours in a day. And I think time blocking is this term that has gotten, you know, so much, it's so much confusion. What's time blocking? Today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With 25 plus recipes to choose from each week, there is something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need with customizable orders every week. You can easily change your delivery days or food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. If you follow me on Instagram at Real Girl Talk Podcast, you've seen me cooking with HelloFresh and Green Chef. It's made my life so much easier at the end of the day. Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh, and with a wide variety of meals to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands, and now my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash Real Girl Talk 12 and use code Real Girl Talk 12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. You get fresh pre measured ingredients, mouth watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. That's why. It's America's number one meal kit. Again, go to HelloFresh.com forward slash Real Girl Talk 12 and use code Real Girl Talk 12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Time blocking is not having a to-do list. Time blocking is all about a specific task in a specific time frame. So just one example. 
they say, okay, well, I've decided I'm going to do Facebook between 3 and 3.30. Close, but no cigar. Because what are you going to do on Facebook? Are you going to be spending 10 minutes looking at your friends' uh, posts and commenting? Are you going to be spending another 10 minutes maybe sending out some voice notes through Messenger? Mm. You know, um, you know I, I want to know exactly what you're doing. So that's huge. And I have a free time blocking training. Um, it's unlisted on my YouTube, but if anybody wants it, you know, maybe I can put it in the show notes. I'm happy to do that, you know, okay. kind of share it. But, but this idea that, oh my goodness, I have all, uh, point number three, I have so many things to do. I'm doing all the things. I'm posting all over Facebook, Instagram, you name it. I, I'm everywhere. I'm, I just joined Clubhouse. I'm doing all the things. Mm -hmm. And I say, just stop. Because remember when I talked about we set our parameters, mm -hmm. okay? I don't care what gurus out there are telling you to do everything. Unless you have a staff of five or more, mm -hmm. you're going to burn out right. in a year. Absolutely. So my thing is go all in on one. I talk about the power of one. Go all in in one marketing strategy. You really love Facebook and that is where your ideal clients are? Great. Throw all of it right there. And maybe if you want to dabble in Instagram, that's fine. But that is a tangential. That is an extra. Okay. You don't have time. I work with women who are in middle management, and sometimes senior management in corporate, and they're sick and tired mm -hmm. of the crap that they get with from the men above. And I shouldn't say men, but a lot of it. I mean, I worked in, in law office. I know a lot of men still, you know, we've come a long way, baby, but we've yeah. got a long way to go. Right. Right. So, so they want to build this business, you know, on the side, they have these high powered positions, but I say you can do it, but you got to be laser focused. Mm -hmm. So there's the power of one, one marketing strategy, go all in deep on what are those specific action items you need to take to really optimize what you're doing. One more last tidbit on social. It's not about the post. It's about the connection. So if you, it's not about the followers either. So if you have 10,000 followers, and you're posting three times a day on Instagram, let's say, and you're doing stories every day and all that. Well, wait a minute here. How often are you interacting one-on-one, -on, -one, in the DMs, on phone calls, commenting and having real dialogue? If you're not doing right. that, you are truly wasting your time. No wonder you're tired. No wonder you're overwhelmed. You're working too hard. Yeah, because I think we can get lost sometimes in the scroll I used to use an app and I'm actually going to start using a different one, but you can do your pre post. So if you're in business, I mean, if you're just playing on Instagram and you just do a post every now and then, fine, you can do that. Follow along with your stories. But if you are very strategic and intentional about what you're posting, you can post those ahead of time and set those times. Facebook, you can do that as well. I know my daughter has a Facebook group called Living Learning Lifestyles, and it is all about, and I don't know, she has a little under a thousand people on that Facebook, and she posts recipes, and, and she posts uh, deals of the day. So she has a partnership with Amazon, which I think is very cool, and Amazon will send her, hey, listen, she may be the only one that gets this particular item that's $80, and they'll tell her she can have, sell it for $10 for 24 hours. And it may not even be something that you're looking for, but when you see it, you go, well, heck yeah, for $10, I'll get it, you know? So she does that. So she has kind of like an affiliation with Amazon. And then she also does a lot of recipes. She does giveaways. She does once a month giveaways and all this cool stuff. But Christina is super busy. I mean, she works for, with our children. She has her master's degree in education. And so she pre-posts. And unless it's something from Amazon for a 24 hour, she will actually pre-post ahead of time and she knows her post will hit at seven or seven thirty or whatever she sets her time. So that's kind of something that I tell people a lot. If you feel like you're one of those that you're addicted to the scroll, then you need to avoid social media completely in the mornings, completely because it will dominate your morning. I tell them, save the scroll when you're sitting at the doctor's office or the dentist office waiting for your appointment. That's where you do the scrolling. Other than that, set your post ahead of time. So I think that's a great idea how you focus on one. And when you kind of master that and you have a good following, because followers don't necessarily lead to customers, right? I mean, I, I know some of the people that follow me, but I don't, I don't even know. Like I, there, I can look at analytics and I have a lot of people that are in their 30s 
that follow me. And I'm like, maybe I'm a great mother figure to them. I have no idea, you know, but I think that you can, and you can go back if you have a business account and you can look at that, but followers does not necessarily mean customers. And so I think I try to use it as intentional. I talk about when my podcasts are coming out, I post the podcast, I do put things on there that are inspirational and quotes and videos and, or if I have announcements and things like that, and that's what I save it for, but you can have a lot of fun. My Instagram stories, there's no telling what you're going to see. You know, I could be videoing my granddaughter going grocery shopping. I may find the latest find in a beauty supply store and I want to share it with everybody. You know, it's kind of just my behind the scenes life. Um, if I just feel like sharing it, you know, in the story. So, just to kind of add to that, if you're a scroller, I highly recommend you not get on social media until the late afternoon or evenings, unless you're sitting at a doctor or a dentist appointment, because you will truly get stuck there. And then you walk away and go, oh my gosh, I didn't even do my post. I had so busy yeah. scrolling. I forgot. I forgot to even post. You know, behind the scenes and personal stuff on Instagram stories. That is what allows your followers to really get to know you. Mm. So I love that. Sometimes, again, on this idea of tips, ladies, stop overthinking. Oh, you're and you're comparing. Stop comparing. God made you. You're unique. So you're like, oh, look what she does. I can't figure that out. Good. You don't have to. Talk about you. Like the other day I went in and I, 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 I just funny things. I have things planned through Planoly or, or other apps like that. Right. Um, but I just had a thought, you know. I said, I am one of six. I had three boys. I love the chaos and noises of a family in the house. And I work from home, obviously. And that particular day, this house just seemed so darn quiet. It was just me. And so I went on my stories and I go, weird question. Are you like me and you like it noisy or do you like the peace and quiet? I think 90% of people thought I was nuts. But it was just me because I love to see the real side, the personal side of the people that I'm following. So that's always good. Really, really good tips. What else can you share with us? Oh, uh, gosh. Well, one thing, I want to address one thing you said about monetizing. Again, I want to really reiterate, we're talking about being intentional, being strategic. And again, we're focusing on the business side, not just the fun side. But if you're there on Instagram, for example, and you don't have your Instagram account set to business, you're missing out. You're missing out on insights invaluable insights uh, and and please make your your all of your everything should be public on every platform right because it come up in the search engines but about monetizing again we have to be intentional you know is there something that you know you're promoting this month well then think about what topics can you touch on that leads them in to buy your course or to buy your product or whatever it is and so again on this idea of overthinking it's really not rocket science. We're thinking too hard. We're worried too much about what everybody else is doing. We need the blinders, like the horse in a race. We really need the blinders. Right. It's so funny. I used to be, see if this is you. Did you ever have a desk full of notes or sticky notes? Uh, yeah. And you have that? Is that you? Right or was that you? Okay. okay. So I would be like, oh, I got to think of that. I grab my sticky note. I put it on my computer. Or I have like my pad. And I would think, oh, okay, I'll do these things today. That's kind of sort of good. That's better than keeping it in your head and trying to remember it. But the list just is overwhelming if you haven't thought about when are you going to do it and all the different steps to doing that. So as the example I use with social media, you have to break it down. And, you know, I don't know if, if uh, your listeners are hearing this as much as I am, but everybody's talking about their flow, right, their workflow. And all that means, it's fancy words, just like SOP, your standard operating procedures. Ladies that have a business, think about what are the steps you need to take to do the things you're doing in your business. As an example, our podcast, right? So there's a time, what are the different steps? You have to choose a, a guest. You have to schedule the interview. You have to record the interview. You have to have somebody put your intro with your this, that, and the other, and then somebody has to upload it to Libsyn and blast it out. And then you have to do your your blog or your whatever. So that's what I'm talking about with workflow. But with each of those steps, determine a guesstimate the first time you do it. How long is it going to take? And then you block it out. Now, where a lot of women get caught up here, Sherry, is they say, well, um, I got a phone call. 
and they pulled me off task and I just couldn't get back into the rhythm. Well, hold on a second. Unless it's an emergency, I want you to honor that time block that precious because you see everybody's talking about money as precious. No, no, no. Money properly invested, you get it back and then some. But time, once it's gone, it's gone forever. And so when we are lackadaisical on our time block and we allow just, you know, a marketing call to interrupt our concentration time, well, then, you know, you really have to be intentional about your priorities. And that's why the time block is important. No, from 4 to 4.30, here's what I'm going to do. And the only thing that's going to pull me off is a call from one of my kids or some sort of 911 emergency. So those are some key elements to make time blocking really work for you. I do the same thing. And my husband knows that when I'm in my element of doing whatever I'm doing, if I just get a random call and I'm in the middle of something, I will say, I can, I call you back. You know, if you hit that little, whatever that little bubble and they have, you can customize it or you can say, can I call you back later? I will at least do that. And I follow up and I, and I do call, I do call them back, but I will do that because I know that if I get off task and I start getting on the phone with a girlfriend or, you know, Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Or what'd you do last weekend? I can't, I, I can't do that right now. But if I answer the phone, I'm done. Like it completely messes me up. And I learned that a long time ago. And my husband knows that of me. And so he has told me, you better not be ignoring my phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just raised something else that I want to impart upon the ladies. And this is whether you're a mom, whether you're in business, whether you're an employee working for somebody else, you should get to know your rhythms. Like, are you a morning person or are you an, a night person? For me, it's funny. I used to always be a morning person. Now that I hit menopause, I'm a morning person and I'm a night person. That squeezes my sleep. So that's not really good. But (laughs) you too? Yes. It's messing with me. (laughs) My husband is really good though. We one thing that we changed in our marriage back in November of, well, it was maybe the November, the November before that was a year ago. One thing that we changed is because we felt that we weren't incorporating each other in our lives as much as we need to. I was kind of doing my thing. He's doing his thing. And then we come together every now and then we decided that we're going to bed together. And so we go to bed together. Now there may be a time where I'm not ready to go to bed, but guess what, Judy, I go, he may not be ready, but he'll be like, all right, let's go to bed. If you're you're tired. And we do do that together. But what I found is no matter what time we decide to go to bed, I still can't stand waking up early. I can't stand it. I want to be one of those people so badly. I really do. I want to be one of those people that say, oh my gosh, I got up at five o'clock or I got up at five 30 and I hit the gym and, you know, and then I made my celery juice and then I listened to my spiritual message and got the kids ready and off to work. I go, I'm like, you're lying. There is no way (laughs) this has happened because you're going to bed at eight o'clock at night if you're doing that. Now I will tell you that my daughter, my daughter gets up early because she has to be at school. She's a teacher. She has to be at school. And so I know, but she listens to her spiritual messages on the way. So she's, she really does a lot. She's a multitasker. I mean, she does everything at one time, I feel like. But I do want to be one of those people that wake up and just, you know, it's all roses and sunshine at 5 a.m., but I can't do it. I cannot do it. I need to put it on my vision board. I need to put a big sunshine that says 5 a.m., and maybe I focus on it, and I'm able I'm able to do it. I don't know. I'm sorry. So when do you get up on average? I typically get up between 6.30 and 7.30, depending on if I have a morning meeting, if I have to get on Zoom, or if I'm traveling, if I have a podcast, you know, I normally will get up around 6.30 or 7. I try to gear towards 6.30 because it gives me time without rushing to do my spirit, my coffee, my spiritual, do my shower, do my thing, and really get going. Now, if I have to be somewhere at 8 o'clock, it's a totally different ballgame. But if I am doing my meetings from home, which has basically been the norm lately, because I haven't traveled very much since midsummer of last year, when I was doing that, I was getting up at the crack of dawn and hating every minute of it. So funny. I, I did a podcast episode where I said, you know, I just want you ladies to understand 
so many are like, how do you do this? You seem so chipper all the, all the time. And, and, you know, you're just like the energizer bunny. Well, that's just who God made me to be. Nice. But I do get up by six every day, even on the weekends. I, if I sleep till seven, that's like late. That's like a bonus for me. But I am not one of these like super happy like, I don't exercise. I go get my coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. That's the first right. thing on my mind. I wake up. But, so I wake up. I say, thank you, God, that I'm alive. I pray for my kids. And then I get up. And, and I'm 55 now. So I got joint aches, my back, my knees. And I just drink my water, try to stretch a little bit. But, yeah, don't think that everybody that gets up is, like, going, woo-woo. Because that's... Yeah. You know, I don't, morning routines is not my... I would call it my superpower. That's not my superpower. But I have superpowers in so many other aspects of my life. And I can teach you how to be your own superhero with your own superpowers if we're talking in my element. But that's not going to be one of them. The 5 a.m. is never going to be one. And Terry Seville Foy, I just... I love her. I love to listen to her. But she talks about that morning routine and that 5 a.m. all the time that I feel like I need to do it before I meet her because I need to be able to say, oh yeah, I'll get up at 5 a.m. I need to at least do it for a week before I meet her because then I can say, oh yeah, I do that. <laughs> Since last Friday, I've been doing that. Exactly. <laughs> well, Judy, thank you. Share with everybody before we go, let's talk about your podcast, um, the name of your podcast and some of the guests that you have and what you talk about. Sure. My podcast is called She Is Extraordinary. I'm going to give a little teaser for your audience. Okay. I am launching the She is Extraordinary movement. Hashtag She is Extraordinary. And it's going to be coming on International Women's Day, March 8th. It's going to be um, the movement seeks to change the way women see themselves. And I want this to be, we're on mission to encourage and empower women across the globe to fully embrace who they are in Christ. Again, to be powerful, know that you're powerful and be bold and be courageous to become that extraordinary you to walk into your purpose. Whether that's a stay-at-home mom that's fantabulous and does that whole home thing, or whether you have your own business, or whether you're in that C-suite, or you're working for that, you know. So the She Is Extraordinary movement with a brand new revamped website is coming next month. I'm so excited about it. So that podcast is really a mix. Sometimes it's me talking about something life or business related. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I like to interview amazing guests like you. I hope to have you on the show very soon, Sherry. Of course. Um, good, good, good. So entrepreneurs, um, influencers, people that are extraordinary. But here's mm -hmm. the thing. Here's the catch. I've never met a woman that would say that she is extraordinary. Like mm -hmm. I interviewed... Um, I interviewed um, the head, the CEO of Douglas Elliman, Dottie Herman, mm. and she, you know, I don't even know how much she makes. I mean, she's, she's the head of a major real estate brokerage in Manhattan. That woman is, is a beautiful woman. She has such humility, and she's so real. Like, I was so nervous to interview her, but I realized she's just a person, Right. and she, she spoke at an event a few months before I interviewed her, and I watched her. And do you know that she um, was apologizing? There was a mess up with her PowerPoint. And the person that went on stage before her had this full-blown, amazing PowerPoint presentation. And this amazing, beautiful, such, she, she was voted as the, um, uh, the top self-made woman in real estate a couple of years ago. I mean, she's wow. done big things. But she took the stage and she apologized. I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm going to fare with the person that was just up here because I don't have a PowerPoint. Of course, she delivered like nobody's course, business. But right. I use that as an example that here's this woman that is truly extraordinary. And yet she's so humble. And yet she is, you know, um, I take nothing from her. I don't mean it that way. But I'm just saying that's an example. So no wonder we ordinary women, mm. quote unquote, ordinary women are like, I'm not extraordinary. But, but I see women as extraordinary, especially when they become who they are in Christ. Mm. Because God doesn't make weaklings. Is it 2 Timothy or 1 Timothy? I always forget. 1-7, when they say, God did not give you a spirit of fear or timidity. He gave you a spirit of power and of sound mind and of love. That is who we are. And then, of course, the Proverbs 31 woman, who oh, is yeah. a serial entrepreneur. Right. She's an amazing wife, amazing mom. Right. And by the way, 
I want your listeners to read that, the whole chapter, Proverbs 31, because you'll see that it, the Bible says her businesses were profitable. So those running a business feeling guilty, oh golly, does God want me to make money? Yeah, value for value. You are stewarding the gifts and talents that he gave you. You're giving it away um, in the way of service. So it's only fair. You're giving away value. You should take value. So anyway, those are the kind of topics and real life topics. You know, on an upcoming episode, I want to interview my husband. And I, I up to this point, have only had women on my podcast. We said but the I, same thing. Did you? Yes, we just had that. We had that conversation a few weeks ago. I was like, I've got to get you on the show. I don't have no idea what he's going to say. I'm probably going to have to edit the heck out of that sucker. But I don't know what he's going to say. But we talked about having him on the show as well. And I was going to tell you, Proverbs 31 Ministries, I subscribe to their newsletter and it is powerful. If you're, if you do not have Proverbs 31 Ministries, subscribe to that because they send you emails. They're always beautiful. There's a story. And I had Nikki Cozart on my show and she is one of the ministers and speakers for Proverbs 31. And she really lifted us up. She really did. There are a lot of women who, um, I think that's an area that needs to be explored. If your husband's very supportive, um, mine is very supportive, that's a gift. If your husband's not supportive, that's a problem. Whether what he's not supporting or supporting is you as a wife or you as an entrepreneur or whatever. So I think that's really interesting. So yeah, <laughs> that's good. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much. I love having you tell everyone where they can find you also on social media. Sure. I am at Judy Weber Live, at Judy Weber Live, pretty much everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. And I would love to connect. I am a connector and I love to collaborate and I love to connect people with other people. And you know what? Above all, I'm a women's advocate. So if anybody needs anything, you reach out. I will be right there for you. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, Sherry, for letting me come on. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in all the way through Real Girl Talk. Make sure you subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you happen to have iTunes, would you do me a huge favor and leave us a rating and review of the show? That's the way that we get this message out to more and more people around the world. And you know, giving us a review and rating, something good is going to come back your way. Plus, I know you're the type of person that wants others to live their best lives. So can you copy this link, share it to your friends, share it on social media. Remember, people need to be inspired. They need to have tips. They need to have business ideas more than ever right now. And I know that you can help me on this mission. Thank you again so much. If you want to be a supporter of the show, go back to realgirltalkpodcast.com. Click be a supporter. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being a part of Real Girl Talk podcast. And until next week, keep your encouragement tank full, your faith in God, and create your beautiful life.